to Madame Rajan podcast. Thank Glad you. to be here. Thank you for being here. So, um, as we were talking before, I know that you are a mentor at the startup uh, visa program at CIC. Correct. So, can you maybe talk a little bit about what is the startup visa or the visa startup program is at CIC and what is your role in it? Okay, yeah, the startup visa program is a program for entrepreneurs who come from outside the EU and need a visa and want to be building their business in the Netherlands. And CIC is one of the facilitators and we are basically executing a program on behalf also of Firm House where we provide coaching and, and, and other startups of activity like peer-to-peer uh, uh, coaching from other startup visa participants yeah. uh, to help people basically you know, land in the Netherlands as an entrepreneur and uh, you know, build their business successfully. Yeah. Uh, it takes six months of coaching where you have like two coaching sessions each month with me and uh, Yoshibet Kastanier, the other coach. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting program because you get, you get teams from all sorts of different continents. Uh, yeah. Lots of things revolve around culture and baselining them in basically into the Dutch uh, business ecosystem or maybe even the Rotterdam business ecosystem. Yeah, and one interesting uh, thought that uh, came to mind is what is the difference between local entrepreneurs and international entrepreneurs who come here? Do they share with you their fears? There is something that's more d- difficult for them when they come here. What is maybe the most thing that they share with you that that's that's number one challenge? Well, yeah, that's an interesting question. Like, yeah, first of all, I think uh, you do need to understand their their situation is totally different than from local entrepreneur from a perspective of opportunity. Yeah. Like their first and foremost goal is to basically get some security. Yeah. Uh, for being here. Yeah. Uh, and and by operating a business at the same time, I think they're picking up two challenges at the same time. You're in a new country, you don't know anyone here. Yeah. And also you have to find a way to do business and to make money yeah. all by yourself. You're not, you're not going to comfortably land into like a, a job or something like that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it yeah. has like a double-edged sword there, lots of risk on both sides, but you've been, you've been in this situation. Yeah, right yeah, now, so yeah. yeah. I, I, that's why, you know, but I'm a kind of a very social person and I put myself in a lot of uncomfortable situations. I get out, out of my comfort zone and I'm easy to talk to people, but I feel some of them are very shy or they're, you know, they will get like a culture shock and then they will feel like, oh, what do I do now? Do this? Yeah. Right? Might happen. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that we question like I'd have for you is like, what was the first priority you had when you got here? I had to know the people as soon as possible. Yeah, so, so you're not really thinking about building a business first. No, 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 no. I uh, I was here three years before I even started to think about a bit. I wanted to start my own business, but I wanted to get to know uh, the Netherlands yeah. before I even uh, risk anything. So now imagine that these people that help in the startup visa program do it exactly at the same time. They come here yeah. with a visa to build a business. So they have to showcase within a year that they can do that in the situation where they know hardly anyone. Yeah. So we decided to like start to reshape the program a bit around, okay, at least you know the other participants, so yeah. we're going to basically introduce you to people who are in the same boat as you are. Yeah. And uh, if you look at like the general idea of facilitation, incubation and coaching, most incubation and acceleration programs design around, let's say, maximizing the results for your business. Yeah. And we realized just recently we should design around maximizing the opportunity to actually land safely in this city. Yeah. Uh, with, of course, uh, hopefully uh, enough sustainable business to keep you, you know, self-sustaining. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that might already be good enough. Right? We don't have to talk about hip startup culture kind of scaling up quickly scenarios. If you're just building a business for yourself, you make some money and you're good to go, you, you meet new people and, and, and you have like uh, other people who are doing the same thing as you are, Yeah, you're already good to go, right? That's basically the goal of Startup Visa, to bring you to this country to at least establish a baseline and uh, get a good ecosystem around you of people that you can rely on. Yeah, what I also know from Berlin is actually it's a new, uh, Berlin is a uh, entrepreneur, mm-hmm. one of the uh, entrepreneurs who applied for the visa uh, for the startup visa program she said that it's a new visa that it's yep. like how long did it establish i think it's two or three years old this program maybe longer i'm not sure uh and, uh, and, and a couple of countries offer similar kind of programs now yeah uh and um it is, it is intended to find talent like up from abroad and, and fill up talent gaps like that i think that's one of the reasons they designed it 
and um, yeah, so it, you have to basically be very, let's say, ambitious to start a company and to move that entire company to the Netherlands for some reason. So um, we would expect people that have basically certain skills and certain abilities to come here. So uh, yeah, as far as I can tell, uh, it, the people I work with at least are, are, are in some cases very ambitious people and then at the same time decide to completely like relocate their entire lives. So that's pretty, yeah, yeah. very interesting group of people to work with of course. Yeah. What about, what is that, uh, just so people know, the qualification for one year, like what is it that if you don't do for one year you're no longer qualified for the visa program? Well. Um, I, I think you need to have some sort, and from our perspective, at least something of in, an intellectual property that can scale, that you can scale products and services around. Yeah. That we're interested in that, so at least you know it has to have some potential yeah. of, of, of growing and scaling. Uh, but like I said, we realize that that might be the potential. With uh, you know, when they get here in the first couple of months, it's better to focus on giving them a, uh, an accessible ecosystem just to get done what they need to get done. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but the requirements are that you have some ambition to go beyond being a, a consultant or, or just you know, taking care of yourself. Basically. Yeah, yeah. What I like about it uh, also is uh, in English and, and in Rotterdam sp uh, especially, you don't have to learn another language for you to start, uh, like in other yep. countries like France or something. Yeah, yep. which really makes it easier to to apply for it and to come here if you compare it to other European countries. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure even if, if many other European countries have such an arrangement that you can actually start a company uh, and uh, uh, you know just come here for that reason. Yeah. Uh, so uh, some might. Uh, I'm, I'm only aware of other countries such as Canada. So it's a big choice then, do I go to Canada or do I go to the Netherlands? That's yeah. like totally different continents. Uh, but um, yeah, so yeah, I think that's, uh, it, it, it helps people to land, right? If you yeah, can yeah. Least talk English to everyone, that's, uh, that's, that's easier than if you have to also start learning a new language. That yeah. only increases the barrier to, and to, to success, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now let's uh, start in from the beginning. Yeah. Um, when I met you at first, because we were talking a lot about computer science and the languages yeah. that you know and, and you have done some uh, software and you developed yourself, so I thought yeah. you studied computer science at Delft, but yeah. that wasn't it. No. <laughs> what did you study? No, I studied uh, something that at least in Dutch we call technische bestuurskunde. It's uh, hard to translate that to English, I'll leave it to the <laughs> listeners to do that. Uh, and, it, and, and I was a pretty lazy student in that sense. Uh, and uh, when I went to the computer science uh, introduction day, I realized that most of the stuff that they taught there, yeah. I already knew. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was uh, developing software, at least I was coding, let's just put it that way, uh, when I was eight years old. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, my dad had a software company, so I was basically born and raised in that whole situation. Yeah. And um, by the time I was finished with that introduction day for computer sciences, I asked him, like, hey, what do I, I already know X, Y, and Z, when do I get to learn that properly? Yeah. Well, that's probably something we'll touch upon in year, year four. So, okay. so what do we do in the, all the other years? Like, I had to go through all these concepts that I already knew about. Yeah. And so I was like, that's going to be a waste of time for me. Like, I'm going to be wasting four years to find out by year four that I already know all that stuff. So I'm going to do something different, something I don't know. Yeah. And in, in the meanwhile, I'll probably also start a business. I already was uh, doing freelance uh, projects. Yeah. Uh, contractor projects uh, uh, when I uh, was in the first year of university. So. And yeah, that was basically my starting point. And I remember there was a one project you talked about that you did in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, yeah. What well, was there was two, two interesting projects. One in Abu Dhabi, so my dad had a company that would, uh, you know, do digital signage, that's the market basically, and uh, the Abu Dhabi Stock Exchange wanted to uh, use that software but needed some integrations with their uh, brokerage systems. Yeah. And it was also, for, it was brokerage systems, it was their system, my dad's system, and it was, uh, 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 LED systems for showing those ticker tapes. So you have basically you see all the stock exchange uh, uh, listings and their, their current rates. Yeah. Uh, so I had to uh, tie that all together yeah. in two weeks. And wow. they paid me uh, a lot of money to do that because uh, they, it was a stock exchange and they wanted to do it properly. And for some reason they trusted I could do that. And um, I'd actually, I actually succeeded. That's good. Yeah. It took a, a week longer than expected. 
uh, and it was like a very interesting project for me to do because I was basically in an international environment and uh, you know as a student if you're like uh, like I was like 20 years old or something like that uh, like people trusted me with those kinds of systems so I felt like hey this is apparently this is for real yeah 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 and yeah. Uh, and, I, and I succeeded so yeah. that also gave me a boost of trust yeah confidence yeah kind of like you're doing uh, something greater than than other students yeah. your age. Yeah, and the same thing happened that I got an assignment through my uncle, also the IT company, and they um, they wanted to have a full restaurant booking system for the restaurant itself. And oh, yeah. Come in with a table, you'd be, uh, you'd be obviously wanted to record yeah, basically a POS system, so point of sale. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we programmed that as well, so and, and the restaurant used it, so and they were very happy. And, Again, I realized, okay, software has a tremendous amount of value for actual companies. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to start my own software company one day, basically, uh, and find even bigger opportunities than just doing build to order projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is also ties back into the philosophy I have about building a business. Like initially, same with even the startup visa uh, participants, just be in business in the industry you want to be in, like the, the, the things you want to do and the vision you have. Yeah. And from that point on, you can actually, you know, seize bigger opportunities. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you're in, if you're in the industry, if you're in the market, you know what's going on. You probably have a better sense of what's the best opportunity out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, I know that you. I can, I can easily say one of the pioneers of starting lean startup or bringing that concept to Holland. Yeah, yeah. Why lean startup? What? Yeah, that was, that was also something that stuck with me during university. Uh, the very idea that I was basically with two other founders starting a company and they, and they were comparing that with uh, what, what happened to Google just maybe a couple of years before we started a company. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, these are just two kids in a garage who start a company. It's like, okay, so every, every company starts out like that, which means that if you're just if you're just smart enough, you know, and you have access to means like uh, a couple of computers to try st- try things, yeah, uh, you know, there's nothing different in Silicon Valley than the Whoopi here because we're also a university campus and we have these great people around us that can actually build uh, software. So I, I myself included. Uh, so what, what's different? Like, let's just do it, you know. And uh, and then if you ask people like, hey, but what? does it take to be an entrepreneur and they would say like yeah I guess you just have to be born with it and you have to get lucky so it felt a little bit strange to me it's like okay yeah. but that that's that's really weird like it shouldn't be like that so I always felt this little this little bit of a, a nag in the back of my head going like I don't think it's it's like that you should be able to understand entrepreneurship and then the startup came around and we was basically clear that Eric Ries did a very good job at describing the behavior of entrepreneurs, how they really operate successfully yeah. and also how they sometimes counterintuitively make decisions to drop things or to so-called pivot or whatever it is they do. Uh, so I found that very interesting because it like, it, uh, you know, it always felt to me like something that wasn't right. Like you do not have to be lucky to be a successful entrepreneur, you just have to pay attention yeah. and you have to be smart about it. But uh, you have to be able, eager to learn about what you're trying to accomplish. Like, what customers am I serving? Why am I serving them? Why are they buying? For yeah, example, yeah. Uh, what, are, what, am I, what problem I, am I solving for them? And it turned out to be uh, very true. I do think actually uh, the majority of entrepreneurship skills you need, you can actually learn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's back then I needed it. Like I was running my company, we already had uh, tons of paid customers, but we weren't sure whether or not we were ready to scale. And basically, the promise of lean startups is that you would be more diligently you know, looking at that mission of progress and scale. So I, I tried it and, uh, and then since I realized I was one of the few people who actually gave the proper shot at it, I decided to create my own little meetup group around it. Yeah. And that picked up fairly quickly after I initiated that. So that's how I became uh, one of the first to take a hard look at Lean Startup. Oh, that's really, really nice. Yeah. I, um, I know that you, are, you know it by heart Yeah. and uh, you teach it really well. So, yeah, you were one of our participants yeah. last year, I did one of our programs. And, uh, yeah, but that's also like rooted into the fact that we saw this thing evolve and we helped try to help people make something out of Lean Startup and sometimes we fail at that, same thing, right? You fail at the first couple of attempts yeah. and we were frustrated by it. We started to improve our workshops, you know, to really get through to people. 
because a lot of the myth building that sits in the way of people who are first time founders yeah. uh, make it that they don't believe that what we teach them is actually true. Uh. 